welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be doing a best of beauty for makeup 2018 get ready with me style today because I thought it'd be more fun to actually put on the makeup. And this is just gonna be like some of my top picks from what I loved using last year. So yes, let us begin. I have nothing on my face right now. I just put a little bit of essence. I used the, what's it called again? The, the, the tambourines water essence, which I showed in my skincare video. So let's begin. So for like skin brightening or like skin whitening, I've been loving the Goodal Premium Snail Tone Turn Up Cream and the VDL Luminaire Cream. These are very popular in Korea, just to give you a quick sort of pick me up to the skin tone. Let's use the VDL one, which comes with a spatula. We're gonna have a little quick sort of catch up time as I apply my makeup. Yeah, so I have gone darker and I'm loving coming to the dark side. I just kind of like how Hmm, maybe I just was too light-haired for a very long time. I don't even know how long I was light for, like maybe three years that I was like blonde. And I guess it's like a nice refreshing change for me. It kind of feels like everything is a bit cleaner looking and I feel like everything looks more balanced and higher contrast on my face. Try not to go overboard with these creams, like take a really, really tiny, tiny bit tiny ass bit. Okay, so for sunscreens in 2018, I've been absolutely loving. I told you guys I would include this in this video because I forgot to include sunscreens in my last video. I've been loving these Kenology 95 ones. These are Korean ones. They're very natural. They blend very easily and they feel more like a moisturizer cream than anything. This white one has a tone up effect, kind of like pinky. And this one is just like a regular sort of cream, light gel consistency that blends in really nicely. So I've been loving these for when I want a little bit of hydration on my skin and when I want to go for something really truly matte and very very light and non-greasy. I've been loving the Aviance UV Expert Glitter Orange. This is amazing and I mentioned this in my favorites as well. UVA, UVB, micro dust and blue LED protection as well and it's like the lightest milky consistency ever. Maybe I should just use a little bit on my forehead to show you guys. Um, I make sure that I am really well protected even when I'm at home actually because my house has a lot of sun and my skin is really really sensitive to the sun so I get a lot of moles if I'm just exposed to a little bit of UV exposure. So I don't know if you can see but that blended in super quickly and it's like so light, there's no grease, there's nothing. Before we keep going, I do need to mention the other primer slash sunscreen slash correction bases that I've been loving in 2018, the Bobbi Brown Primer Plus Radiance. Amazing, all of Bobbi Brown's makeup to me just feels like skincare. Boosts the radiance, even skin tone and locks in moisture, but it has SPF 35, the other ones are like 50. Moonshot's Multi Protection UV Bouncer is SPF 50 plus as well, and this also just feels like skincare. It's so natural and light, and it also locks in the moisture. For just pure color correcting, I've been loving the Stila One Step Correct, the Skin Tone Correcting and Brightening Primer. I've just been coming back to this. Takes care of redness, dark circles, and sallowness, it's like a mix of all these different colors in there. If you guys have never seen this product before, I highly recommend it. It never works against the other products you put on top of it. So, it, you know, it never causes all that spaghetti noodling. The Makeup Forever Radiant Primer in this blue one is really good for sallow tones and like eliminating orangeness. And I've been loving this one. This is kind of new. The Kaylin Bulgarian Rose Oil Makeup Primer is pretty much just for Bulgarian Rose Oil. It's like a serum and it's water-based, so it never does any Anything wrong with your makeup and it has a beautiful natural Bulgarian rose scent to it so if you're kind of lacking a little bit of moisture in certain areas in the winter season like in Korea it can get really dry areas of the skin can get a little patchy that's when I like to sort of just dab 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 pat it in and it doesn't matter if it's underneath sunscreen or not it works really well for all different occasions okay so they're all the bases and the primers that I've been liking we're doing a good job. This paste is good, guys, right? I don't know if you guys have seen this, but I really like this Nivea lip balm. So I'm gonna apply a bit of that first. This cute little egg-shaped lip balm. So for foundation, guys, I have been pretty much liking the same cushion foundations as the years before. And that doesn't mean I haven't been trying a lot of others. I've been trying so many cushion foundations, but at the end of the day, these are my still my ultimate favorites, so don't be too surprised, guys. The Moonshot Micro Fit Cushion in shade 101. Nice and blendable and very soft and diffusing of the skin. 
the YSL Le Cushion Encre de Peau Fusion Ink Cushion Foundation. I still absolutely love this, especially for a topping foundation. And I've been really loving these two matte cushion foundations. This one is the Studio Perfect Hydrating Cushion Compact, which is new, and the MAC Lightful C, which is the C Plus Coral Grass one. This one is just a little more hydrating, and this one is more of like a satin. I like using the MAC ones as my first step. I like it because it's just so natural. It feels like a serum foundation. They have buildable coverage and the really nice tone to it. It doesn't get cakey, it doesn't build up patchy. Black one is just really nice for the winter seasons. They gave this to me when I went to Bali with MAC uh, towards the end of last year and this was like a new release. I'm actually not sure if this is a global release or if it's just within Asia or Korea. It's amazing, it's really really nice. It does not feel like foundation which is what I love about MAC's cushion foundations. Um, and I prefer using the MAC ones as my first step foundation, I guess, over my YSL and Moonshot ones because these ones kind of stick a lot better and they have a little higher coverage. Whereas the Moonshot and YSL ones, um, I think they're really good for if you have nothing to cover but just to just sort of even everything out and give you a lift of skin tone. But yeah, the Moonshot and the YSL ones are great for topping because they create this like softening diffusing look so i don't know if you can see but it's kind of done a little bit there for us down my neck a little guys i haven't done a get ready with me in so long i think my last one was like over a year ago but i'm gonna try and do more this year if you guys enjoy these because it's a really good way to like catch up whilst we're trying out new products together as well I want to try doing a get ready with me like while I'm unboxing next time as well. Okay, I don't actually do this every time, but for the sake of showing you my best of like concealer pencils, I'm going to apply a little bit of concealer over my moles just to even everything out a little bit more. I love my moles, but sometimes um, if it's not accentuated nicely, it kind of just looks like I have really dirty skin because they're not like the type of moles that are like super dark and defined, but they're kind of like diffused moles like everywhere. So it just makes me look like I have messy skin. So sometimes I do like to do the full coverage, but like only for special, special occasions. But yeah, this is the concealer pencil that I have been absolutely loving. It is the Corsels. I don't know how to pronounce this. Corsels? Corsels Concealer Crayon. My friend actually gave me this and recommended it to me and it is actually an amazing pencil. It goes on really nice and it doesn't dry out, it's really precise. This is actually very popular right now in Korea amongst a lot of makeup artists. Typically, it doesn't work well for moles. It works a lot better for breakouts. I don't have any breakouts, moles right now, but it's not really covering that well. But we still try. So if I'm ever doing concealing, what I do is I put on my first layer of cushion foundation first, which is the concealing layer, laying down coverage and the stick and the hold. Then I do any concealer work and I go in with my very, very light topping cushion foundation. So hmm. yeah, I'll apply the Moonshot one. My cushion puff broke earlier as I was getting ready for this video. So this is a new long comp puff that I took out, but it is my, uh, but it, <laughs> why can I talk? But it is Moonshot. Soften out my skin and to even everything out one more time. Really diffuses it nicely and really naturally. It doesn't really have super high coverage though. Yeah guys, let me know if you like me with dark hair or light hair. I know you guys are probably used to me with light hair for so long. So this would be a big change. But I think I'm kind of like welcoming going back to like my natural. <laughs> Okay, for brows, I've been loving the 3CE Eyebrow Kit and the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo. When I'm lighter, I go for this one because it's blonde. Just really soft and nice to use. And the 3CE one, I use when I'm a little darker. So right now, I am dark-haired, but it's washing out, so I actually mix them both. I'm gonna go in with the 3CE one first. I'm just going to mix both of them together. And because my eyebrows are more on the sparse side, I actually like to use a powder first to fill them in softly. And then I use pencil later to define it. It's just the same thing as I've always been doing, guys. And then I use a little bit of the darker side on the end. Yeah. I hope you guys can hear me well. My mic has been screwing around with me. We actually literally just went and bought a new one just then. Because I'm about to film my Kaleidoscope episode 2 next week. What's this? Oh, 
didn't even know that I had some scars here. Yeah, we actually just literally went and bought new ones. Thank God for them exposing themselves to be dying before the filming of Kaleidoscope episode two, which is gonna be um, a beauty episode this time. So, you know, the first episode, guys, you guys know was like Gyeonggi-do tourism, about like travel and adventure. In episode two, I always wanted to show you guys like where I go to get my hair done in Korea. Um, just to sort of recommend where if you're visiting Korea and you're looking for like a good hair salon that really takes care of you and has good service. Like a lot of celebs get their hair done there as well. If you're just curious to see what it's like, uh, I wanted to show you guys. So I'm going to take my friend and we're going to have fun and show you guys what it's like in Korea. I'm going to go in with the Anastasia one. I like to sort of mix both colors now because I'm darker. Just to lighten and soften a little bit, I just touch it up in the front half of the brows. And that way it doesn't look as flat and like one dimensional and the Korean word is takke. Where are my pencils going? 2018 the best brow pencils were definitely benefits precisely my brow pencils. They have spoolies on one end and like a really precise pencil at the other and it, of course it's twist up. I also love the goof proof brow pencil for when I don't want something that's like super you have to draw each hair on it's a lot thicker and quicker to work with this one has a bit more of a like rounded applique uh, surface area whereas the Bobbi Brown perfectly defined one is more accurate and like precise and long and thin so this is really good for getting that precise edge and I've been really liking using this to just define the bottoms and the edges of my brow now if you do your whole brow using these pencils, it can look a little harsh. So I do like to sort of take my brows as like a piece of art. I always look so funny when I haven't got any eye makeup on and I've done my brows. Literally look like I have worms on top of my eyes. So my auntie used to say. Okay, now onto eyes. I actually have not been using primer. <laughs> I actually realized that I don't really need primer in my life. My eyelids are small and they don't get oily or dry. So it just kind of like decently picks up. And sometimes I find primer actually makes it cakier. So right now I'm using, just because of lack of time, my fingers. And this Face Shop Prism Cube Eyeshadows. They're really smooth, the colors are so nice. It's really good quality. I mentioned this in, I think like my November favorites because I felt like it was really underrated. This color is the perfect color for that eye base. If you want to just like pick up the color of the eyelids, this is a perfect tone. And you can also use it as highlight as well. I've been loving these milky shadow palettes from Holika Holika. And especially this one. A little warm tone for my liking, but I really like these colors here. So I'm going to go in with this one. It's a number one. I'm going to sort of sweep it across my eyes using my Muse brush in number 177, the flat eyeshadow brush. Super soft, blends at the same time as applicating, uh, as applying. So I'm mixing that color together so it's not too orangey, it's kind of nudey. Guys, by the way, in my last video, people were like saying, what is that weird breathy sound that I can hear in the background? My videos aren't haunted, guys, don't worry. Um, yes, I think I should explain that I have a bird for anyone who's new and she makes a lot of weird noises. So please excuse Scarlett. I've been really loving this palette, guys. This is from Wake Make. It's called 16 Plus Color Bomb Eyes and it's got so many different beautiful colors. Magnetic and it's got this little mixing tray here as well and some highlight colors mix of mattes and shimmers. I'm gonna just mix these two and just apply it on top quickly. Let's go straight into the dark color. I'm gonna take this one here. I've been loving this brown. Brown is like the perfect brown of, I'm not trying too hard brown. It's not overly too smoky brown. I'm not too warm or cool. It blends nice as well, so it's diffusing and it's not totally matte or shimmery. It's like a perfect brown, so I've been loving this. And it also has an element of grey, so it perfectly matches my ashy hair at the moment. I've been finding it hard finding some browns that go well with this hair colour. This hair colour is quite a unique mix of different things that my hair salon did. And I'm going to show you who he is in my next Kaleidoscope episode, by the way. So stay tuned. He's amazing. So I'm using my Muse blending brush to just apply it. And I'm going to blend with my pink brush that I was going to come out with as a budget line. If you keep supporting my Muse white brushes guys, we will hopefully be able to get there with releasing these budget eyeshadow brushes, which I worked so hard on by the way. And I can't show you all of them in case somebody copies them, 
but I still have hopes and dreams to be able to make them and release them for you guys soon. I did them because you guys requested some more budget friendly eyeshadows like portable and budget so hopefully one day we can release them. It's like a whole set of a lot of brushes that kind of complements the ones that my brush set kind of didn't have. I'm actually going in with this little beautiful color here. I'm applying it right underneath here. I watched How to Train Your Dragon 3 yesterday and it was so fun. I feel like this was one of the best animations in a good long while. Going in with my Shiseido eyelash curler, I still use this eyelash curler to the end of its life. And I've gone through so many of them. This maquillage one just fits my eye shape a lot better than like Shu Omura's one or Chanel's one. I have so many eyelash curlers that were like, I should not have got this, like my eyes are way too flat. Can you guys see how flat my eyes are? But yeah, How to Train Your Dragon without any spoilers, guys. It was such a good movie. They had like all the elements in it. Friendship, romance, family, leadership, comedy, and touchingness, touching moments. The first movie was actually really good. The second one, I don't really remember that much. But this third one, I felt like was just the best produced out of all of the three movies. I feel like just refreshing my face one more time. So I'm going to go in with a slight layer of the YSL cushion lightly around the eye area. Actually, when I'm touching up throughout the day, this that's the area that I touch up the most. I actually don't do any other areas. So the under eye area, like this, and then around the mouth area, which I'm not sure why, but it tends to fade for me, especially because I guess when you talk, the like constant moving and the muscles and everything like kind of makes it fade. And also from eating. Um, the rest of the face, I don't really tend to touch that much. So now, right, for eyeliners, Woodbury, you guys know, and Clio Kill Black. I still love the brush one. Um, I still have yet to try M Cosmetics ones. I haven't tried any of Michelle's makeup, but I would love to try it because I have heard good things about it. Have you guys tried it? And have you guys tried the Clio Kill Black as well? And how do you find that they compare? So anyways, I'm going in with this wood brie. I'm gonna go for a sort of smoky look. I don't think I've been able to update you on how I do my eyeliner lately, but I take it in from the outside in and stop about two thirds of the way from the outside. And I tend to leave this little area. I don't know how to explain it, but this part here, not directly above the pupil, but slightly to the left, this little maybe 30 degree like part, I leave that part empty like I blanket or like I sort of smoke it in and I go in from the inside as well and then I go on the outside the outside becomes a little bit thicker and it tapers out and that way I feel like it just makes my eyes more enlarged and it doesn't look like totally blocked off like one line so it really does open up the eyes a little bit and it widens it more it looks more natural so I'm gonna do that on the other side the tight line. That's why I love this Woodbury eyeliner. It's like so precise. That way, cleansing it up. I'm pretty rough with this because I'm gonna go in with my Kill Black eyeliner. Define the edge a little more, make it sharper. That went a little higher than I wanted, but it's really hard to do this while you're filming. <laughs> when you don't have a proper mirror, I wish this was like right here in front of me. But you know what? It's kind of gone a bit angled. I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. Let's just match it. I actually have been doing it a little lower lately, but we can always change it with a bit of... Yes, I'm gonna change it. It's too high. So I usually, if I wanna change it, I just take a little Q-tip. I say Q-tip now. Cotton bud is the Australian term. Okay. That's about the angle that I've been doing it. The only thing I really dislike about this brush is that it really runs out quickly and the tip kind of dies. So it like dries out and therefore I need to close the lid and give it some time before I come back into the other eye. I also have been really loving these Colorgram eyeliners. This is a Korean brand that's kind of cute. My friend um, Yondo Kong did a collab with them. That's how I kind of found out about it. This black one, so it's like really, really creamy eyeliner pencils that you twist up, but it's a bit different. Like it's really, really smudge proof and it sets really good and it's super pigmented. I'm gonna use this pinky one. And you know what? I'm gonna use a little bit of this eyeliner to just darken and deepen the inner part. It's super dark. Mm. 
You know, guys, I was actually watching Shane Dawson's videos on sociopaths. Sociopaths, am I saying it right? Well, that's the Aussie accent, <laughs> sociopath. And it was kind of like really eye-opening. I know that it's kind of created for entertainment purposes, so it's probably really like exaggerated and dramatized a bit and kind of stigmatized, but it made me really think about people around me <laughs> and the people I've grown up with and like one in every 25, if that is a statistic, like if that's the real statistic, that's actually pretty crazy. But it does kind of explain a lot as well. We don't have much time, so I'm gonna go in with my blush. My favorite blushes have been my friend's blushes, the Peach C blushes. I mentioned these in my favorites, so I've been loving mixing these two colors and these two matte colors, the well-dressed and just a pinch. So I like to mix it together with this slightly metallic coral orangey color and it just gives you more dimension, I guess. So I concentrate the orange a little bit more on the sides and with the pink, I kind of gradate towards the middle of the face. Therefore, it kind of acts a bit like bronzer, I guess, the orange bit. And for peach seed, they're both very peachy colors, but one is slightly more corally than the other, so I like to mix those as well. Before I do blush though, of course, I'm gonna do contour, and this is still my favorite contour at the moment. I'm gonna go in with my contour brush. Contour. So yeah, I've been like looking into sociopaths, and it's like a really interesting concept. I don't know about you guys, but growing up, we learned a lot about mental illnesses because Australia takes it pretty seriously. And there's no stigma against it. There's a lot of support, but sociopaths, psychopaths, you didn't really learn about that. Honestly, I haven't been into all the YouTube drama lately, especially like with Jeffree Star and everything. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but I'm actually a very like anti-drama person. I try not to involve myself with drama. I just don't like it. I don't really like talking about other people, especially if it's, I don't know, we're just humans and we don't really know the whole truth about someone and if it's gonna be gossip and slander, I just don't really wanna do it. But when it's to do with psychology of people, I love to find out like the way things work about everything. So um, it helps me to really understand people better from the root up, if you know what I mean. So for me, when I kind of evaluate somebody or something happens to me, um, instead of reacting to the one thing that somebody did, just my personality type, I always kind of think about, I, I always ponder about, I wonder what made that person do that or like kind of like the root or the history of that person. I'm always kind of like, I wonder maybe their upbringing or they had a childhood traumatic accident that made them like that or, you know, I kind of don't just look at the symptom but I try to find the cause of it so that I can deeply understand somebody and not like misjudge them. I feel like all my life, Especially being like a second child, I found it really important that you kind of give somebody a go all the way to the end and listen to their side of things because nobody listened to me when I was growing up. They, you know, I was a second child that was like not worth listening to, I guess. I'm contouring. So yeah, that made me really like kind of interested in that area of things. But that's about it guys, nothing more beyond that. So I've got a whole contouring tutorial on how I contour my nose if you want to see. But actually, I'm gonna use this concealer brush to contour a little bit more precisely. I'm excited about 2019 on a change of topic, guys. It's gonna be a great year just because it's a new year to live life, you know? And what a joy and what an honor to live each day afresh and to have new opportunities to fulfill your desires and fulfill your dreams and to work hard towards a greater goal, you know. I think that's a wonderful thing that we can take for granted. I do feel the age coming on though. If there's anything that I would like to give as advice for like teenagers or early 20s, things that I wish somebody had told me so that I could redeem my time a bit better is, <laughs> well, we're talking about beauty wise, is to apply your skincare on your neck, guys. Don't forget your neck area, do not neglect it. It's the first area that it starts to like give away and show wrinkles and signs of aging. Choose your friends wisely. And one thing that I really, really wished that somebody had told me, but maybe it was just the very specific lesson for me and my personality, but it is the fact that 
you do run out of energy. You really do, you run out of energy. You only have a specific and set amount of energy that you can use in your life and you will one day run out of some of that steam. I'm gonna use the MAC ones because I feel like just using this today. So I'm gonna use the Just A Pinch on my angled blush brush in 173. I made this like really small so that you can make really precise work and use it as a highlight brush too. But yeah, that is one thing that I really want to kind of remind to you guys if nobody's ever, ever told you that. Because you do have a finite amount of energy and everyone has a different store and different capacity of energy, but some have more than others. But eventually, like sooner or later, you will sort of start to slow down. And that energy when you're in your youth is like, irreplaceable. I'm just gonna go in with this, uh, what is it, well-dressed. That's actually why a lot of employers take advantage of young employees because you will run like full on when you're young and you'll go over time and be so full of enthusiasm and zeal and you'll come up with the best like creative solutions like staying up late. That's when it, it all happens pretty much when you're younger and you're fresh. So when you are young, focus it when you have that energy and that prime time on the things that really matter, on things that you really want to achieve with your life because the time just does not come back. Um, okay, wait, hang on, what am I doing? I'm gonna deepen my eyes a little bit more. In this brown with a bit of the blue and the gray, so just smoke it up a bit. Yeah, so I really do encourage you guys to think about what you wanna achieve with your life and do it early. You will not get your time back you'll not get that energy back. I'm not saying that I'm getting super old or anything, but I think I can just like foresee these kind of things. Like, oh, this is what it must be like. And I'm also surrounded by a lot of more mature people. So I'm able to kind of like see these things a little more and see it kind of coming. For mascara, I've been loving the YSL Seal the Color Smudge Proof, which is really smudge proof and it has this really unique applicator. I don't know why I didn't talk about this more in 2018, but look at it. And it's got little fibers in there as well. I also have been loving this No Smudge Waterproof Mascara by Bobbi Brown. Amazing, non-waterproof, but it's non no smudge, so it's really easy to take off and it also volumizes well without clumping. As well as the Neogen Extra Volume Curl Metal Mascara, Maxi Cara, I mean, I told you guys many times, I don't really like the packaging, but it does have an amazing amount of volumizing. But one thing I have against it is that it really kind of dries to this super solid state. So your lashes look like it's held by wax, but it is really, really volumizing. So I've been loving that too. I'm using the YSL one. But yeah, we're starting the year on a bit of a reflective note, but um, it's gonna be a great year, guys. I wonder what you guys are up to this year and what your goals are for life and what to achieve. What kind of person do you want to become this year? I think that's better than thinking about what do I want to achieve like in terms of data or into worldly achievements. I honestly think it's more important to focus on what kind of person you wanna be and everything else kind of will come along together with it. Whether it's like, I wanna be more disciplined. I want to be a nicer person. I wanna be a kinder person. I wanna be a wiser person. That's definitely something that's on my list. I wanna be wiser and I wanna be more loving of others. And that loving of others doesn't mean just being nice to everyone and being taken advantage of, but it means that I'm like, able to consider other people's whole entire life story. Even if I'm not able to understand or know it, I'm just able to um, give the benefit of the doubt for people because when people do things that you don't understand, you just have to think, maybe I just don't understand what's going on and what is happening in their life. I'm blabbing, right? <laughs> but yeah, because when I feel like I'm at peace with others, no matter how nasty people or things can get around me, if I'm not affected by it and I hold my own peace and I'm like, okay, that might be because of this. So I'm just gonna cover that with grace. I'm gonna pray for that person. I'm gonna love on that person. Even if, let's say you were like super in the middle of everything, you got conned into things and it's just been unfair. Sometimes life gives you those things and you just can't do anything about it. So better to keep your peace, keep your joy, be happy with life so that you can just hold your ground and do what you need to do with the best that you can. So that's my goal for this year. For highlight, I am gonna go in with my favorite Dior highlighters, 001, 002. This is pinkier, this is slightly golder. 
I actually like to layer, as you guys probably would have guessed. I love to layer colors. It just makes it so much more special. Have I even done enough blush? I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this peach sea blush just to kind of pop it up a little more. I feel like this makeup is really similar to the makeup that I used to do eight years ago when I did Get Ready With Me, but just a little more pinky because that's the, been the trend in 2018, starting from all the Korean makeup. You know what? Actually, I'm not going to layer this time. I think this is enough. And I've put on a little more than I wanted, but... <laughs> I'm liking this makeup. I'm liking it. So yeah, I'd love to know what your goals are for 2019. What are your goals? What do you plan or desire to do or be more like this year? For lips, I have too many to show you, but I've been loving this Hera Sensual Tint in 416 Beautiful Color. It's actually a tint, but it's like a liquid lipstick kind of. I also have been loving this Style Nanda in number 115. You guys have seen that, it's a lipstick, look at this colour. I'll apply a bit to show you. So soft and nice. For tints, I've been loving the Face Shop's Coca-Cola tint. This is so nice. I love this one in red label. And I've been loving these Shine Chic lip lacquers from Etude House. These are my favourites, more than the matte ones. Like a beautiful lip gloss that's very pigmented shiny but not sticky. I love them. And the Holika Holika Peko Tint Bombs, which I've talked about so many times, it feels like you're kind of applying an ice cube on your lips and it's like melting in. Love that. Kind of drying, but the color is beautiful and the way that it sits is just so nice. And of course, the Max Versicolor Varnish Tints. I just love so many different shades from this range. My favorite, also the Benefit Benna Tint is always like a staple for me. I have some of their lip tints with me all the time when I'm traveling in the little portable size versions. So today I am gonna, I'm gonna apply a little bit more of the Style Nanda lipstick. And to pop it up a little, I'm gonna apply a bit of this Shine Chic Lip Lacquer in PK002 Muse On. It's a beautiful pink color that's corally pink and kind of like see-through pink, pastel-y. It's gonna brighten that color up. Something I've been really loving this year is actually the Style Nanda Eye Switch Pot in Petal. I really wanted that pinky eyeliner, the glitter one, but they ran out and they said this is the exact same thing but in a pot version. And obviously it has more of the glitter than the eyeliner would, so I gave it, I gave it a go. <laughs> gave it a go. I gave it a go and I love it. So I don't use it all the time. I wasn't planning to now as well, but I'll put it on just to show you guys. So the way that I apply this, I take a little bit from the pot. Got a kind of opaly, mermaidy look to it, and also has like gold tints too. Slightly on the bottom. You really have to make sure that you don't go overboard with this because all you want is a slight shimmer as you move your face. Yeah, when I want a little bit of a lighter highlight color that's not too like shimmer crazy, <laughs> I use the MAC ones. So I've been loving Soft Frost and mixing it with Theming Blush because it's so cool toned. It can look a bit crazy sometimes. So I'm gonna mix it slightly and just go over it a little. And down my nose. So final step, I'm just gonna go over one more time with my YSL Cushion Foundation. Blend everything in, make it look less like this is highlight, you know. So guys, please let me know what you'd like to see more of on my channel this year. I'm still trying to figure out like, I'm just still trying to figure things out. I've been on here for eight years or something. I've been to so many different makeup brand events. I've been to so many different beauty camps overseas with a lot of influencers. I've done a lot of different things in these past eight years that people would say that makes an official influencer, you know? But I still feel like I'm figuring out what you guys would like to see, 
what I would like to do and what's a realistic kind of expectation seeing that I'm not like the most perfect model for beauty YouTube but I'm just like an everyday girl who likes doing makeup, you know. I'd like to hear if you guys would like to see more makeup tutorials or if you'd like more personal heart to hearts this year or if you would like more of like kaleidoscope type of content because I love to do that kind of really produced content as well that can air on places like TV and that's awesome, right? So please let me know what you guys would like to see more of this year. I know YouTube is kind of changing algorithms. You guys are not getting my subscription notifications. <laughs> um, Instagram also, um, the algorithm's changing there as well. But once again, I wanna take this time to thank you guys for all of your support and for your love throughout the years, your patience, even though I don't upload that often and I'm like really picky and perfectionist and, and everything. But thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you for understanding that Meet Muse is a little different from like everyday vloggers and for just loving and trusting my content and spending time with me. My love language is quality time, so I highly appreciate that aspect of it, that um, you guys are my friends and you spend time with me and you enjoy it. And I'm like quirky and weird, but you still love me. <laughs> so in return for that, I would like to do a little giveaway right now. <laughs> So I am doing a giveaway guys. I put together like a huge batch of makeup, including like Huxley Cushion Foundation, Pyongang Yur Nutrition Cream, Clear Cushion Set. There's so many things in here, like my favorite milky palette from Holika Holika and all these different lip products, mirror from Style Nanda, some skincare products. I'm gonna be doing this giveaway just to say thanks to you guys and reward one of our Muse fam. So if you guys would like to enter, simply leave a comment down in the comment section below follow me on Instagram and make sure to like this video to let me know. In one of my next videos, I'll announce the winner there. So good luck guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this Get Ready With Me. Have a wonderful week guys. Stay beautiful inside and out and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye everyone.